welcome back. I'm Lindsay. Welcome back to the vlog. We're keeping it a little simple around here today. I have been so excited about some of the changes going on in our home and I just couldn't wait one more day to share some of them with you. The first one I've been teasing for a minute. It's the new area rug for the living room. So let's go right into that. I really did love the old area rug. It was beautiful in our previous home and it was originally purchased to kind of disguise the, let's say, um, less than beautiful carpeting in our rental home. <laughs> Having a ivory base was nice because it blended with the ivoryish, beige-ish, dirty-ish <laughs> carpeting of the rental house. And I loved the subtle blue because it pulled in some of the denim blue colors that I was looking to add through some accessorizing at that time. Now that we're in our new home and trying to really make this space warm and comfy and cozy, and also, you know, seasonless, although I like to make seasonal updates, I really do like most of the stuff in a room to work all year round. I personally don't love changing out area rugs, so I might do it once or twice a year, but that's maximum. Honestly, most years I just kind of make it work. <laughs> Since we got this beautiful new vintage, mid-century modern, beautiful painting, you may have seen this one in a previous thrifting vintage haul video. I'll link that one down below, but this is the game changer. I'm staring at it, that's why I'm not looking at the camera, but a lot of you mentioned that it perfectly ties in with the cognac leather of our article sofa. This one's the Sven. If you are looking for a similar one, we highly recommend it. It's held up great for us. We did purchase some leather like conditioner and cleaner and stuff, which I probably should get around to using if I'm being quite honest. <laughs> Let's put that one on the to-do list for now. But anyways, since we put this beautiful artwork up, I knew that we needed to have a major change in the area rug because that ivory blue just wasn't working anymore. So enter this beautiful Amber Lewis Laloy collaboration rug. I really love this style. It is actually like a blush teal, but it reads more as like a, I don't know, like a warm sandy beige and it's got a beautiful light undertone, very distressed. It's supposed to look super vintage. And honestly, for a printed rug, I agree with all the reviews that I read, you would never know. It is really beautiful. It's got like just kind of nice sort of natural looking wear and tear. And you can still see the beautiful border all the way around. And there's some lighter areas, some darker areas. So if you like that sort of variation in a vintage rug, something that looks truly like it's been worn in over time, this is a very affordable. The size makes a huge difference, honestly. The old rug that we had was originally nine by 12. One of my best tips when selecting area rugs is to pump up the size of the rug. So many people don't wanna spring for a larger size. They look at that price difference and wanna save a little cash. Honestly, when you are doing that, you are limiting what you can really do in a seating area. The larger the rug, the more the area comes together. It really does make the room feel like it's appropriately full, all the furniture, might hopefully sit on the area rug, which brings it all together, makes just everything work. The nine by 12 is just a little bit too small. There was a lot of floor space around it. It was difficult to get all of the side chairs and accent seating on the rug.
jar of it, I take it too far Now I dwell in the sand like a fish on land But I'm deep, deep down on the bottom of the well I don't belong, can't you tell? This place must be hell No more cookies in this jar Did I take it too far? Now I dwell in the sand like a fish on land Now that we've increased to this 10 by 14, it perfectly fits the space. There's a nice perimeter of our natural wood floor around the airy rug, but there's also room for all of our furniture to sit on it. It makes all the furniture feel like a cohesive group and it makes our living room really stand out as a area to hang out. I love this area rug so much, I couldn't resist ordering another from the collection. And honestly, I think I originally ordered it for our bedroom, but when it got here, I thought, oh, it looks really good for my plans for the guest room. And then I thought, oh my gosh, would this have been a better print color combo for the living room? I'm just so stoked on this new one. So I'll be sharing that in an upcoming vlog. Once Travis gets some woodworking projects done in the closet in the guest room area, I'm gonna get to work on that design. So very exciting. Hey there. Hi. It never ceases to amaze me what a huge impact the right area rug can make and upping the size, changing the color story, changing the style of rug in this room has really made this whole space come together in this warm, comfy, cozy, calming color palette that I'm going for. Now we're still pretty, you know, heavy in this area in some spaces. I'm still looking to replace the two black IKEA armchairs. Those were originally purchased for a little cozy seating spot in my classroom. They had to come home during COVID, but I'm hoping that I can take them back to school next year. That will then open up that space, hey puppy, for some new armchairs over there. And I'm looking for something light and soft and round and swivel and just comfy and maybe just taking up a little bit less blocky space on that side of the room. Looking to do custom built-ins on this wall and then ripping out that fireplace and doing something totally different. Hi, Pop. I really wanna find an interesting, maybe reclaimed secondhand fireplace facade, something with a little bit of an antique vibe. And I'm not sure if that's gonna be something stone, which of course would be super expensive, or something that's wood to maybe just mimic that sort of French style that I love in a fireplace. That would be my ultimate vibe, is if we could find something sort of vintage marble. Oh, I just will continue to look and yeah, hope and dream for something beautiful like that one day. Until then, I'm just trying to keep the design of the fireplace area very clean, crisp, and modern. And that's one thing I can be thankful for is that even though I would not have ever selected this particular fireplace facade, it's definitely black, it's simple, and it's really kind of working well with what we have in here so far. Ultimately, you know, there's a million projects I'd love to do, but great design, as I always say, takes time and we have to be really patient. One thing that we are gonna get started doing is making our ultimate spreadsheet of design dreams. Everything that we dream 
dream of doing this house. That way we can start calling contractors, getting people out here for different price estimates and prioritizing which projects we want to do in the coming year. And on that note, I can't believe it, but we're coming up on one year in this house. Actually, oh my gosh, no, we're past one year in this house. And I'm thinking about doing an upcoming little house tour video showing you the before we moved in and the current situation, everything we've been able to do in this home so far in the first year and our big plans for the next year. So let me know down in the comments if you have any specific questions on our reno, our home progress, any specific areas that maybe we haven't talked about that you'd like to see on an upcoming vlog. And I will love to cover all that stuff in that upcoming little house tour one year update in our home video. So coming soon. I'm feeling a bit lucky. I've been hoarding some crate and barrel gift cards. And of course, you know, in addition to all the wedding spending, there's a million things I'd love to buy for our home. So I'm trying to kind of hold off right now and just focus on putting that money on our honeymoon and all these other wedding expenses. Uh, video to come, don't worry. I'm thinking right now would be a really fun time to do a little bit of online hunting, see what dream furniture I'd love for this living room. Let's take a quick look online, see what we can find. Now I'm loving this big curvy chair. It swivels, I sat in it in the store and it's absolutely stunning. I think it's probably my dream chair right now, which is why I've gotten some crate and barrel gift cards from family because they know that I'm obsessed with this chair. I also can use Crate and Barrel gift cards at CB2, so they have a lot of really interesting modern options. I'm loving this. I love anything round. Loving the swivel. I really love things that are a bit modern with a spin, something that has a little bit of a vintage vibe. vintage in this room, we could find some cool vintage chairs, which of course I've been on the lookout for. And you know, I love to vintage shop. Here's a couple recent videos. I'll link both of these down below where I've done a lot of just combing vintage malls and antique shops to find furniture. I just haven't really found the right pieces yet. I believe strongly the more you vintage shop, the more regularly you check things out, the more likely you are to find your dream pieces. So you have to be patient. And that's kind of where I'm at. I'm just trying to shop vintage as much as I can, looking always at vintage first and waiting for those dream pieces. And then with that Crate and Barrel gift card balance, I really just want to put that and some of our money towards buying some classic furniture pieces that fit into the overall design aesthetic that we're going for. When it comes to our reno, I really want to do classical, traditional moldings and woodwork, doors, everything that's permanent to the home. I want to invest in more traditional styling. And then when it comes to furniture, I want to lean hard hard into the modern design that I'm the most attracted to. I love the mix of modern and traditional. And a lot of you have responded to my how to decorate French modern video, which has a lot of these design elements that I'm speaking about. I also really enjoyed, I know not, it wasn't for everybody, but Gwyneth Paltrow's home tour. She discussed this in her video where that the home itself was really traditional styling. And then all of the furniture pieces and different elements that she brought in that are movable or changeable are on the more modern side of things.
things. That way, if your tastes change of what you view as modern, or if you want to layer in something else later, you're not permanent with that aesthetic. But if you invest in more traditional styling elements of the architecture of your home, it's gonna be hopefully a more classic style that will never go out of style. If you liked this video, make sure to like, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. If you're looking for more fun ways to update your living room space, take a look at my previous design diary where I shared some of our other recent updates and I'll see you next week with another video. Until then, happy decorating. <laughs> Bye my friends.